What are you doing under there? What's going on everybody? Jen Cravasi at Jekyll Bates and it's time for yet another workshop update. If you're watching this, then you're watching a past version of me because it's now now and it's not then. But I recorded it then and you're watching it now. So if that makes any sense at all, let's move on. I'm going to start today's video by doing this. I wanted to kind of touch up on the dry version of this. It's been clear coated and it looks the next day pretty cool. I really wish I had yellow eyes. Alas, <laughs> that's just bugging me, you guys. It was bugging me when I did this last night, and it's still bugging me today. Um, but there's nothing I can do about it. It doesn't look horrible. Actually, this looks really good. Um, so if we go back to the picture, yes, the colors are spot on. Yes, yes, yes. One thing that I wanted to talk about is this um, pectoral fin you'll notice that i did not shade it there's no shading on it because when you look at the real fish there's no black that surrounds that there might be the slightest shadow on this but that's only because there's some light play going on there whoever took this was clearly using a flash number one you can see it right there um, and you can also see that that casts the shadow but if there weren't flash photography involved in this you would not be seeing because this is this is way too bright for this not to be flash photography because the rest of the shadows don't portray this fish. But anyways, that, I'm just telling you that's the way that it was shot. Somebody, I guess whoever had their camera out had the flash on auto setting. But the colors are nailed, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. You can't go wrong on a Johnston lure. This this is the, per, uh, the perch pattern, and it's just a clean, beautiful, heavy bait and this has been triple coated now so we're all set i'm gonna list this bait as available i i normally stuff like this i'm a little bit jealous over because when i do something that's that i'm really happy with which isn't all the time but this this i'm actually really happy with but i'm gonna throw this up to the up to the fish and gods and say hey if you guys are interested in this let me know we'll discuss pricing and shipping i will do international orders as long as my buyer wants to pay international shipping which is standard you know you'll look at it i'll look at it i won't charge you a penny more than what the united states post office charges me so stuff like this on international shipping if it were to go to canada or, or elsewhere uh, unfortunately it's pricey but uh, it's less pricey through the post office than it would be UPS or FedEx. So let's talk. If you guys are interested, you're seriously interested in buying this, it's not going to be inexpensive, but I'm not going to rip you off either. So we'll discuss that privately offline. The other thing that I want to discuss on this is this is how that pattern came out. This is the close-up look on this. And I just cut out the, the markings to lay it down because it's literally this is the same size from nose to tail. And I just, that's a stroke of luck. That wasn't pre planned. There wasn't anything that I wanted to per se accomplish. Um, just kind of thinking on the fly, no pun intended for trout. The only thing that I couldn't do because there, this is a 2D image of a 3D fish, you'll notice on the better image down here that there's that second layer. So all I did was I just took the first layer and moved it up a little bit and sprayed like four out of these above it so that it more accurately portrays how the fish has that second layer on the top right there. And there's actually like, I think five or six darker markings, but I was kind of running out of space and I didn't want to jam it in there. So I just left it at four and you can see that it's identical to what was underneath of it. But that's how I pulled that off. So yeah, super happy with it. Um, this is what happens when you don't use a uniball Vision Elite. I don't know what pen I had, but it was not, it was whatever I grabbed at the time, and it was the wrong pen. So don't let yourself not have a Uniball Vision Elite around. It's just the best pen that I've found, and they're not expensive. Uh, the Copic markers are good, that they're just really pricey. For, for a couple of bucks, you can get hundreds of signatures 
out of something that's going to be waterproof and and quick dry the distressed crappie did a spray session of this the other day it was a not a vocal spray session i just wanted to give you guys like a quick image how to um so shorter format i used iridescent and fluorescent actually i think it was just fluorescent red on this um lime green there's that this is this is a really cool shot of what that black magenta looks like what an amazing it's like my favorite color ever i think in the history of mankind in the history of airbrush paints that's probably one if not my favorite color because it's great for shading it's great for a primary color um just all around good looking good looking color i did use actual black to do the crappie pattern and then i just muted it down with a little pearl white over top the entire pattern and the reason that I call it distressed crappie this time of year in the fall, the shad are dying off, the crappie are dying off. Uh, every once in a while, you're going to come across a very distressed looking fish. And this would be my interpretation of what that looks like. Very much so. So you can see the, the veining in it. It looks like it's being chased. Um, these are those Ito Japan mega eyes in six mil. So happy with that as well. The Hamilton Crawl. This will go out Monday morning. And I'm also editing and loading a bunch of stuff in for spray sessions. And I think I want to do something that I haven't done yet on the channel. It's been suggested. Uh, it was suggested for a Facebook Live video, but I never got around to doing it because I don't do a whole lot on Facebook Live, only because I kind of have to stick to my format and upload schedule for YouTube as a YouTube creator and partner. Uh, that's one of the things that I, I like to make most sure that happens during out the course of the week so that you guys can watch the full tutorial. It doesn't disappear. Yes, you can stream it, but it's, it's just a lot easier of a format for me to work inside. Uh, and I do like editing in Adobe. So it's, uh, it's very cool. I like doing it that way. This is the Hamilton Crawl. Got those neon green eyes. You can pick those up at Lure Parts Online. Go find them. These are six mil. I think they make fives as well. Um, but going back to what I want to do is I want to give you guys a say in what I build. And and yes, you make suggestions and you're awesome with your suggestions. I try and get to as many. But I want to go a step further. I want to get a little crazier on it. I want you to give me one step in anything that you want to do. You could say put red eyes on it or do a black stripe on it or pre-coat the bait black. And I'm going to take that entire list of what your recommendations are. And I'm going to put them on uh, a randomizer. So I'm just going to shoot suggestions that you have made to build the craziest looking bait ever with your suggestions. So I'm going to lay that out a little bit more in the, the coming next couple of videos and maybe throw something in the, uh, the community file to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. But I really, I want you guys to make the bait for me. And it can be the craziest pattern. It's going to be a random suggestion pattern. So let's say I spin the wheel and it starts out with, you know, not even a primer. I'll start out with a blank and somebody will say, oh, you know, paint red here or paint this or paint that. I think that would be fun just to do something completely different and out of the box. Next up, this is the Old World Gill. And uh, this, these orders are going out to Rob Myers Monday morning. Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday. You can see I'm coming off a pretty decent weekend, so life is good. Thanks for hanging out. The Old World Guild does not have a whole lot of prominent markings on it other than I think the only thing that's not freehand is the black. Uh, this little ear flap, I did use the one that I consistently used for the dinger s's um, but everything else on this is painted freehand including the stripes i think the way that i've achieved uh, the mint green over the years is to lay down some opaque white and then come back with some transparent leaf green and then top that with pearl white and it kind of blends that down to a really cool mint green and then i've just got a little bit of sky blue and some tangerine on it and everything else in there any other color you might see like the yellowish kind of looking colors that's all the blends that the oranges and greens and it's like it's just three colors it's sky uh, leaf green and orange with whites and it's all a wet blend but I think it turned out pretty decent and it is the old world gill 
this little guy I'm going to be uh, bringing in to the fold a little bit later on this week. Um, I'm, I've painted a few of these. I've still got a few over on the clear coat rack. But probably by Thursday, Friday, I'm going to have a few of these uh, in production for you guys just to kind of give out, you know, party favors. Now, but if you guys are interested in purchasing one, I'm going to roll these out probably on my Facebook feed Wednesday night, Thursday, somewhere around there. A fun autumn crawl with a lot of detailing. Haven't seen one of these in a while. These are fun. This is my walking deadline. I've had this in production on the website for, gosh, over two years now. And I'm pretty sure I was the first to actually start doing it. But I've seen a lot of folks do it after that. And, you know, I, I get asked all the time, does it bother you if somebody does a copy of your bait or tries to emulate what you're doing or your style? No, I, I really don't. And the reason is, if you look back in the history of any kind of art or literature or anything that has to do with art and sciences there isn't a thing there now even if you're looking at music there's only so many chords that you can play there's only so many notes that you can play there's only so many colors in the spectrum and the prisms so yeah i i really it, there's a book out there that's called steel like an artist and it's been out and put in publication for a long time but it's a pretty short read quick read but basically it goes into talking about you know how pretty much a good artist is going to take something that maybe you have done or i have done or one of the classics the masters if you're talking about canvas painting and interpret it into something completely different and unique for themselves are you going to have actual copies you know yes but the the difference between a good artist and a and a ripoff artist is that a ripoff artist can only copy somebody else they don't have the interpretive uh, ability to create something or change something that's completely unique but are there people out there that I yeah sure there I have no problem with it I normally don't the only thing that I don't like is that if you're taking something completely of mine and calling it completely yours and it hasn't been changed at all if there's an adaptation yes you're painting it on a different lure and a different blank but you guys know what i mean right but yeah as far as the purposes of teaching i've seen a bunch of these out in the last couple of years and it just it makes me smile because you guys are actually listening to what i'm saying and you're paying attention to the tutorials and i just i love that i love that you guys are interpreting what i'm doing and making it unique in your own that's the whole point of art it's the whole point of being able to think out of the box and do something completely different with something that's simple. You know, if you guys saw that bubonic that came out, was it sun tonight? Tonight was it coming out? Saturday night? Anyways, um, he just, he's got the same principles and ideas as a lot of us do. You know, just, you see these big box baits out there, they're just cookie cutters. You know, the Strike Kings, everybody's got the black shad dot, and everybody's got, you know, white on the bottom and silver on the top, and a little bit of accenting, and, and either like fluorescent orange, and it's just so it's boring I mean it's just you can you can interpret that and make it something completely unique or your own and that's what I encourage all of you guys to do that's what I'm here for I'm here to teach you and help you become a better version of you in your artwork and it's not going to be perfect it's just the way I adapt it but you shouldn't be just listening to me there's so many other YouTube artists there's so many other lore artists out there the custom artists that are really getting I hope that, you know, Bubonic is starting something where you can get some recognition for being a custom artist, and that's fantastic. I'm so, so happy for him. I'm so happy for him. And I hope that he just knocks the doors off of the industry and does gangbusters. But if you haven't seen the video, it's on Mystery Tackle Box. Go check it out. Um, it's a great 10-minute video about custom, custom work, and I wish him the very best of luck. But, yeah, the long story short, by all means, you're welcome to interpret what I put out there for you guys. This is the Walking Dead Zombie on an S-Crank in blue. Last but certainly not least today, we've got the Imperial Crawl on that 100 SP jerkbait. Gave some red eyes to Rob. These are all going out Monday morning. And just instead of the plain old white he asked for some olive interpretations on the bait and that's what we did and that's all the news that's fit to print thanks for hanging out with me tomorrow or the next day wait today's sunday so tomorrow you're tomorrow if i'm putting this out oh i don't know there's another spray session coming and it's going to be a blockbuster stay tuned see ya mm -hmm.